Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we've got a muscle fiber that we're gonna go over. This is Professor Klein. How's it going everybody? This is Kyle Corbett, and we're gonna knock out the muscle fiber model. Now Kyle, we're talking muscle fibers. You've You've certainly got some muscle fibers. You were a cross country runner. They, they've got some muscle, right? Yeah. All right, maybe not as much muscle as I thought, but oh, okay, but still some right, muscle there. Right. So throwing some shade. All right. Let's take a look at the actual muscle fiber. Look at. First, if we take a look here. We want to distinguish between the actual muscle fiber, which starts here and travels all the way over to here, from. the motor neuron or the nerve attached to the actual muscle fiber. Now in between those you can see the mitochondria that are sprinkled in and out all along through here um, and taking a deeper look into the muscle fiber we have the myofilament which is this which is inside this big part right here if you yeah, take let me, a, let me do this for the yeah, folks at home there yeah there we go so each individual thing right here is what we call a myofilament the tiny little dots there now that's a whole strand of muscle fiber now all of those put together this whole section here is uh made it's called a myo um uh, let me jump in here Kyle. myofibril myofibril right? it came to it came oh look to at that it. just a little rusty a bunch of myofibrils would equal that muscle fiber. And that's how we get to this point here. But keeping it going, this blue section is the T tubule. Anything that's pale colored. It's the uh, sarcoplasmic reticulum. That would be correct. So the sarcoplasmic reticulum is a where the calcium is stored specifically, you know, where, what's it called, where it's right next to a T-tubule? That is the terminal cisternae, terminal cisternae of the circoplasmic reticulum. Let's keep going. Down here, at the synapse of where the motor neuron or the nerve attaches to the muscle fiber. So as we're coming in, first off, this nerve can be myelinated with these rings called myelin sheath. But as you reach the end, notice all these little bubbles. That looks like acetylcholine vesicles. I would say that's exactly what they look like. These are vesicles that hold acetylcholine. Now ACH or acetylcholine is going to be released into the synaptic cleft, this blue area here. So I don't know Kyle, you ever long jump before? Yeah, a few times. What's your best long jump? I'm um, not very good. I was more of a distance runner. Well, at least you tried. <laughs> so basically what the acetylcholine vesicles would do is they would long jump across this blue area. This blue area is a gap of space to the pink area called the motor end plate on the muscle itself, the motor end plate. Now, before we get too carried away here, Professor Klein, you're, you're forgetting about the nucleus, which is right here. Whoa, whoa, what? Right there. Point out the nucleus. You want the probe? I'll take the probe. There's the probe. There's the nucleus. And this big guy right here almost looks like a tumor. Well, it's not. It's the nucleus. So muscle fibers are multinucleated, more than one nucleus often in these. So here we have the myelin sheath, which is covering the axon. It almost looks like a swollen belly, kind of like Professor Klein after a big meal over at Boyd or Thanksgiving dinner. Whoa. How rude. Here we can see the sarcolemma with holes for the opening of the T-tubule as well as 
the end endomycium, which is different from the sarcolemma. So that concludes your muscle fiber model demonstration. Thanks for tuning in, guys. We'll see you in the next one.